so it was either in September or October, me and Kennedy went to meet this Elijah kid at Fear Factory. So we met him there, and we went through the haunted house, and he was, like, super shady, really weird, and I just had a really bad feeling about him. So we got back to Kennedy's house, and I was like, I wanted to say something to her, but, like, she was, like, dying over this kid. So I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to tell her because I'm not, like, that type of person unless I really, like, I really need to tell her. But clearly he was not the right person. And Kennedy and Elijah were talking. Um, he would flirt with me. Like, he tried to FaceTime me, and I answered it. Are you serious? You're going to try to flirt with me and one of my best friends? Like, mm, no. Anyway, come again. So, he, like, I blocked him because, like, I don't, I can't stand that. I can't not stand people like that. So, literally, like, a couple months later, I found out about him again, and Kennedy was, like, t- me and Kennedy were talking about him, and... So, oh, he's just become a freak, and now Kennedy broke his heart, and, which is not the case, literally, he's <laughs> an asshole, so that's not the case, um, he started threatening her, and writing a freaking rap about her that didn't even rhyme, it didn't make any sense, so I was like, boy, what are you doing, yeah, and he's, like, I literally was texting him, like, if you send those videos to any, like, not only will you be exposed, but you'll be embarrassed by many others, just, like, if you post that video, literally, not only will I come after you, but he was, like, trying to fake his age to me, saying that he's 17, and he lives in California, and I was like, okay, you're 17, so what, and then I really found out his age, and now he's trying to expose Kennedy with a rap. But he's faking his age and where he lives. Okay, honey, come again. Literally, she's, like, one of the sweetest people I know. And literally, Elijah does not need to treat girls like that. Like, even if you have a reason, you still don't need to treat people like that. Just because they broke your heart, which I know she didn't. And even if she did, you deserve it because you're an asshole. (laughs) But you deserve it. And she doesn't deserve this exposing stuff. So... (laughs) Look what you're getting, boy! (laughs) So there's Jessica's side of the story. Literally exactly the same as mine. Mm. Boy about to be exposed, am I right? Am I right? (laughs) Hi guys, it's Kennedy. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I know I haven't been here in a fat minute, but I'm here. I'm ready to go. And I know that I'm like literally seriously about to be like, Hi, welcome back to my channel. Haven't seen you for seven months, but now I'm going to tell you the story of how I got threatened. (laughs) Like, anyways, I'm coming back. I'm looking like Dora the Explorer, half pumpkin. I tried to dye my own hair and it turned orange, so that's cute, but hey. Anyways, I'm just gonna start this video pretty fast because I've tried to film this video so many times and I don't like the way it turns out, so I'm just gonna go for it real fast. Like, So, today's story time is going to be the time that my ex, kind of ex, kind of not, but we'll just call him an ex, threatened me this literally all happened last night so yeah i'll get into the story right now so this started in august i started talking to this kid i just got out of a relationship and i sort of was like i need to bounce back like i need to just kiss and diss someone so i found this hot kid on instagram who i was talking to a little bit before in like 2015 i found him i thought he was cute so i was like hey what's your snapchat we're gonna call this kid elijah okay so elijah is the one who threatened me the one who i asked for his snapchat on dm he gives me a snapchat we talk like he calls me cute i call him cute like mm, you know things are going great like it's a, it's a new start so uh it's around the end of august now we're just talking like we're sending hard eyes we're sending kissy faces like you know like he's calling me cute i'm calling him cute he's calling me beautiful i'm still calling him cute so we're like semi-flung right now like we're in a semi-fling so anyways we're like flinging ish up at the moment and he pops the question if I were to ask you to be my girlfriend what would you say I'm like I feel like I would need to meet you first because I've never met you like we would need to be friends and then I can see how things go he's like oh I'm so glad we're on the same track like 
My best friend at the time, her name's Jessica Holbrook. Hey, Jessica. Like, she's probably not watching this because no one watched me, but hey. Um, she literally witnessed this whole situation with me from start to finish. So, like, shout out to Jessica for being there for me. Like, cute. Jessica and I were, like, best friends. Like, she would come over to my house every weekend from, like, Friday right after school to, like, Sunday night we would take her home. Like, it was just like that. And so one weekend we were at my house and this kid Elijah who wanted to ask me out and like apparently liked me he was like hey let's go to this haunted house down in Salt Lake City and I'm like okay sounds good so he's like I'll pay for you but not your friend <laughs> so Jessica paid for herself he paid for me so we go to the haunted house um we meet him there and instantly like I thought he was cute he was really nice uh easy to get along with like I didn't feel awkward like being around him like it was just normal I remember exactly what Jessica was wearing that night and exactly what I was wearing that night. Jessica was wearing one of my shirts that said Girl Gang and it had long sleeve checkered um, sleeves. I was wearing a short sleeve shirt from Brandy and mom jeans from Brandy as well. So, um, and Jessica was like wearing my jeans and hers had holes in them so I understand how she was cold in that way, but yeah. So we get there and I'm freezing my tits off, Jessica's freezing her tits off and Elijah goes, oh, Jessica, do you need to use my jacket? Like, you look freezing. As I'm over here with the short sleeve shirt on looking like I'm about to freeze to death. Like, no big deal. So, anyways, um, like, it didn't really bug me. It was just kind of weird. Like, like, it was kind of like a weird first impression. So, then we're going through the haunted house. And he puts his arm around me. And I'm like, oh, okay. Like, things are starting off nice. Like, okay. And then he grabs Jessica and puts his arm around her. And the whole time we were in there, he's like, are you okay? Like, don't be scared. Like, everything's fine. Like, I'm right here. Not not even talking to me, talking to Jessica. Like, it was weird. So we get out of the um, haunted house. He was, like, standing by Jessica the whole entire time, too. Like, it was just kind of a weird first impression. Like, not a way to win a girl's heart. So, oh, by the way, Jessica was, like, seeing someone at the time. And, like, I told him this at the beginning. So I don't know what he was trying to do At the end of the night Jessica and I go back to my house Elijah goes back to his house and all is all is well he texts me he was like I really wanted to kiss you like mm, like just being really cute how people that you meet for the first time would be and I'm just like I was still like kind of into my ex so I was just trying to get over him and I thought that Elijah was really cute too so like I felt like I kind of liked him and so he was he was like, we're going to hang out again soon. I was like, okay, like, all right. At this point, Elijah and I were, like, talking on the phone a lot. Like, we were FaceTiming all the time. One day, this is kind of weird. One day, we were on FaceTime. And it was late at night. And he was telling me how he wanted to go to a rave in Las Vegas. That was $700. And, first of all, you're not allowed to be in raves until you're 18. And he's definitely, like, 15, mentally three and a half. So, he was telling me how he wanted to go to one of those, and I was like, oh, okay. So, then I go downstairs to start making food. It's, like, midnight. It's, like, a Saturday night at midnight. And he goes, this kid's trying to, like, beat me up. Like, he's trying to kill me. And I'm like, oh, like, that's kind of scary. Like, that's not good. And he goes, oh, hold on. He's calling me. Like, this could be urgent. And I'm like, okay. He puts me on hold, doesn't even hang up the phone, puts me on hold. I sit on the phone for a good seven minutes waiting for him to get back on the line with me. All of a sudden, this message comes on the call that says, the number you have dialed is no longer in service. As if, like, it's not even a number anymore. So I hang up the phone and I text him and I'm like, do you want to explain to me what happened? Because I'm a little confused. And he goes... I can't talk right now like they're coming for me like if they see that you've been texting me they're gonna come for you too like I'm so happy that I like got to know you and stuff like it just being really really weird and I'm like okay like just well I want to make sure you're okay like will you please tell me what's happening he's like I really can't like I, like I trust you but I just need you to trust me on this one and I'm like okay like still trying to get it out of him like making sure he's okay also really confused on what he's trying to pull with me here next day he calls me hey like how are you like how'd you sleep like nothing happened the night before his phone's working perfectly like everything is weird like everything's back to normal as if nothing happened i'm like 
I don't even say hi or anything. I go, so do you want to explain to me what happened last night on the phone? And he goes, oh, everything's good now. And I go, oh, so you can tell me. And he goes, no, I don't want you knowing. I'm like, okay. Now it's homecoming season. We're still talking. I'm getting ready to go to homecoming with my best friend, Aiden. And he was, by the way, really awkward, like really weird about it. Like he'd be like, He's gonna try and kiss you and like, you're gonna go for Aiden instead. Aiden's like my best friend, like, <laughs> I'm sorry. And I told him that, I was like, Aiden's my best friend. Like, he was like, I just don't feel comfortable with you going to homecoming. And I'm like, too bad, like get over yourself. At the same time, he was like really like, he would help me out with homecoming and stuff. So anyways, I ask him, I go, do you wanna see my homecoming dress? And he goes, no. And I'm like, okay. And he goes, no, I'm just playing. Like, of course I want to. And me playing along, like trying to be funny, like he was doing. I'm like, no, it's too late now. He flips out on me. Flips out. He's like, I can't. He's like, I can't believe you've just done this to me. Like, how am I supposed to be with a girl who like can't take jokes? Like, like you're seriously like, I've just lost all respect in you. I can't be with someone who's like that. Like, oh my goodness. Like, I, I'm going to unadd you if you don't apologize. And I go, oh, no, like, I was just kidding. Like, I'm totally fine with it. He goes, no, well, I've lost all, I've lost all trust in you now. Like, I can't believe you, I can't believe you just did that. He goes, I think we should just take a break. And I'm like, fine. Like, if you're going to be dramatic like that, then let's just take a break forever because I don't want to deal with that. By the way, our break was like three hours. He texted me and he felt really bad. And then he called me and he kept apologizing and all this stuff. And he's like, I'm sorry. You want me to buy you a shirt? Like, okay, he was really rich. So he would always, always show off his money always which like at times can be nice but whenever he he's always would be like I have so much money like want me to order a pizza to your house right now if you don't believe me like I have so much more money I can literally buy you a supreme hoodie I have so much money like I can take you shopping next weekend if you want me to like I'm like hey I don't need money like I just want a relationship okay like stop being difficult everything was fine like I said sorry I Gave him the benefit of the doubt because I didn't want to fight. Jessica Snapchats me and she goes, hey, are you and Elijah still talking? And I'm like, yeah, like everything's good. Like, you know, and she goes, I wouldn't like, I would be careful because like he's hitting on me now too. And at first I was like, no, like he's not doing that. Like he's obsessed with me. <laughs> like, uh, okay. But she sent me screenshots and like he asked her on a date because he didn't think I wanted to go. So at this point, I'm thinking like, oh, like Eliza just doesn't like me anymore, but he's too scared to tell me type thing. Like, bummer, like, okay. But then he's like calling her cute and stuff. And like, if he's gonna lead me on, I'm gonna say something about it. Cause I'm not gonna just. So I Snapchat him and I go, so you think Jessica's cute and you ask her on dates to places now? And he goes, no, like, what are you talking about? I'm like, I have screenshots. Like, thank you very much, but I have screenshots. Then we got in a fight, and I, I just decided, like, Elijah, boy, like, honey, I don't want to be in a relationship where you call girls cute to be a good person. Like, that's weird. Like, I ended things with Elijah, and then we started talking literally, like, less than a month ago. I was in Vegas, and I got my heart broken, and he added me on Snapchat and I just felt bad about myself. And I was like, maybe I can go for Elijah again. Cause maybe he's changed. Like, you know, I add him on Snapchat. We talk like he says, sorry. I say, sorry. Like things are good. He says he misses me and still thinks of me. Like, oh cutie. Like we're flung again. Like we have been flung. Like no one talked to me boys. Three nights in a row that I was in Vegas, he would Snapchat me and he'd be like, babe, I'm so drunk. Babe, I'm so high. Babe, I'm crossfaded. Like, first of all, you're four years old. What are you doing? Second of all, do not get me involved because I'm not even your girlfriend yet. Like, if I were your girlfriend, I'd be fine with it, but we're not even dating. Don't call me babe. Guys, this, it's just so bad. It's every single night, I'd be like, get some rest, like, go to sleep, like, lay down and go to sleep. And he'd be like, but I can't because I can't stop thinking about you. Like, like, here's my question. Why do I always get stuck with the boys who are the weirdest kids in the world? Oh, it's such a difficult 
thing to deal with and I don't even mm. I get back from Vegas and he, I, he was like will you come say hi to me so I'm like yeah my friend drives me up there I go say hi to him see him for 30 seconds and I leave I get okay first of all I was in the car and I just waved to him I'm like hi like I was not about to get out of the car he goes get out like I want to see you like give me a hug and I'm like okay I give him a hug and he goes, you look beautiful. Like, I missed your cute smile. And I'm like, okay. Then he walks away from the car and he goes, love you. I'm like, love you too. That night, I was with the friends that took me to go say hi to him. One of my friends that I was with was trying to make his ex jealous. So he was like, can I like kiss you on the cheek and you can like video it and put it on your store? And I'm like, oh, I'm all about helping a homie out. Like, sure. So he kisses me on the cheek. I put it on my story. This kid freaks out. This kid chats up and he would go, he goes, drop your pin. I need to come get you. I don't feel safe with you hanging out with these people. He goes, I'm going to risk being grounded and come pick you up and make sure that you get home safely. Oh my, you have got to be kidding me. I just kind of explained to him like, no, no, no. Like this is one of my best friends. Like, he basically has a girlfriend or is like trying to get his girlfriend back. So like, don't take it the wrong way, but I've been best friends with him since seventh grade. And he's like, no, like I need to please just drop a pin. I go, I will text you when I get home. So then I go home because it was, I was basically grounded too. So I did, I had to be home early and he goes, call, he goes, FaceTime me when you get home. So I know you're safe. So I FaceTime him and he was like, fine, you know, we were like talking and he tells me that he's moving to California by the end of July. And he goes that, and he goes, so we can have a long distance relationship, which I don't want a long distance relationship. No, 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 no. I had a relationship with a guy who lived an hour away and it was too much. Like I could not deal with it. And so then that's when I was sort of just like turned off by the whole situation. I was like, you can't trust me with my best friends you're moving like there's literally no point in what we're doing that night he like told me he was like I'm madly in love with you so you're stuck with me now and I'm like okay I've seen you twice in person like you've literally seen me two times in person what are you saying like I was so confused like I don't like, okay like well like trust me I'll get rid of you I promise then the next day we're talking and I told him I was going to a party and he goes, oh, I hope you know I'm not asking you out until you go a month without kissing anyone. And then that's finally when I was like, okay, Elijah, like, listen, here's the thing. You're moving soon. You can't trust me with anyone. I don't think this is going to work out. And then he was like fighting with me, trying to make me feel bad. And I wasn't in the mood. I was a partying, 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 partying. Like I just didn't want to deal with him. So he unadded me. And then, last night, okay, last night, he DMs me, I haven't talked to him since last night. He DMs me on Instagram, and he goes, I wrote a rap about you, would you like to hear it? I'm like, sure. He goes, okay, add me on Snapchat so I can see. Like, he was trying to make me scared. Like, he goes, I'm making a diss track on you and your name's in it, and I'm posting it everywhere. I'm posting it everywhere Saturday night, and I'm like, all right, like you do that. He goes, I have pictures of you drinking vodka. I have pictures of you with no makeup on. I have videos of you crying. I have all of our text messages in the video. And I'm like, okay, okay. Obviously I didn't want him to post a diss track on me because like I just don't want the negative energy. Like just send it, just send it to me because you're trying to get a reaction out of me. You might as well just send it to me. He sent me a little bit of his rap, and I'm about to show you guys a little bit of his rap. Oh, Okay, so he says he has this huge rap about me, but it's literally 29 seconds long. He keeps saying things like, 
all of this stuff, like threatening me. He even said he was gonna call the cops to my house and that he was gonna come to my house so we could talk about things. I don't want him on my property. I don't want him near me. Um, anyways, so then we were, I was trying to make him feel bad for me. I was like, I have no trust in you anymore. Like, you did, like totally like made me feel so bad about myself. He started like manipulating me. Like he literally, this is what he would do. He would be like, I won't post the video if you post something on Instagram saying sorry. And I was like, what? And he's like two paragraphs long about how you did me dirty and explain the whole story and I won't post the video. And I'm like, I'm sorry, like post the video then because I'm not posting on Instagram about you. Like you're not worth it. He goes, just apologize then and I won't post the video. I go, Post a video because I'm not apologizing because this has nothing to do with me. You're threatening me. You're making me feel bad about myself. You're getting your friends involved. Oh, he started saying things like how he was going to get his friends to come to my house and beat me up. So I told Jessica about this and Jessica was like, she started talking to him and he was like saying all this stuff to Jessica. He, he goes, I moved to California and I'm 17. No, he just turned 16. He has his license revoked, but still drives around places, so cool. And then he starts screaming at me. He's like, am I not allowed to post a diss track about what you what you did to me? Am I not allowed to express my feelings? And he goes, we have emotions too, Kennedy. I'm like, okay, Elijah, like, all right. Like, you do you, post the video, and I'll be making another YouTube video about this, so cool. But anyways, yeah, that is the story of how my ex-lover threatened me and um, apparently is very dysfunctional now because I broke his heart, even though I don't even understand. So, yeah, I hope you guys like this video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for weekly videos, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye!